In this video, I'm gonna turn all these parts into this freestyle FPV drone. And I'm gonna do it on a budget. The first thing we need to do is order all the parts and I went to AliExpress to begin trying to find the parts and balance out spend to stick to the budget. Everything that you're gonna need is listed in the description. I went with a clone or knockoff of the Apex frame that Mr. Still flies. I hate using knockoffs, but we do have to keep to the budget. I bought the flight controller and ESC in a stack to save money and to also make sure they were compatible. Although I'm not sure how long this ESC is gonna last. For a five inch build, we're gonna either need 2207 or 2306 motors. And as the ESC designed for 4S, we're gonna need them to be around 2400 kV. You can't have a Mr. Steel cord without ethics props, and these are the watermelon ones. To keep under budget, we'll use an analog video transmitter. This Joe Hemku one has 800 milliwatts of output power, which will work nicely. I found this cheap antenna that's also going to work really well. Cameras can be quite expensive, but I found a cheap one that seemed to have some decent specs. For the radio receiver, I went with this ExpressLRS receiver, as all my radio gear is exclusively on ExpressLRS. After adding all this to my cart, I placed my order and it was time to wait for shipping from China to Australia. You're going to need a few tools in order to complete the build. Hex drivers, soldering iron and solder are the key ones, but you can also use some extra tools to make your life easier. Putting the frame together was pretty straightforward, although I noticed that some of the hardware wasn't the correct length. Next up was the motors, and this is where I ran into another issue. The included bolts weren't long enough to get through the frame to secure the motors, and the frame kit didn't include any of the right length motor bolts either. I had to go to my spares bin and was lucky to have some the right length. Now it was time to test for the ESC. The screws that hold the frame and arms together are longer than they should be and touch on the bottom of the ESC. This is going to cause a fire when it's plugged in. Checking my spares bin, I didn't have the right length and now the build comes to a screeching halt. I'd have to order the parts from a local hobby store and this is not only going to delay the build but add additional cost with postage. The only chance to get the right length was to see if my local hardware store had them. A quick trip to Bunnings and I found they had some M3 bolts in the right length and it's Australian law that you must have a sausage sizzle when you go to Bunnings. Everything should be right to complete the build now, or at least as I thought. The next issue I ran into was mounting both the ESC and the flight controller. The included hardware for the frame and the stack just didn't work in any combination. So it was back to the spares bin and there was actually another packet of screws I bought from the hardware store for a previous build to save the day. Well, sort of. Next up was to solder the motors to the ESC as well as the battery lead and I added a capacitor as one wasn't included. These are kind of necessary on any build. It's kind of like wearing protection. The flight controller didn't come with any gummies and these are critical to ensuring the vibrations from the frame and the motors don't make it to the gyro. I had a packet from a previous build which I could use. Then from here, it felt like I was on the home stretch. I installed and wired up the video transmitter as well as the receiver. And when it came to connecting the VTX to the antenna, there was another other issue. The pigtail or cable that came with the video transmitter to connect it to the antenna was the wrong one and it's not the standard connector for analog. Again, I was lucky my spare parts came to the rescue. I also had issues with mounting the camera so I ended up forcing screws into it and using hot glue to keep it in the right position. Now it's time to update the ESC firmware to BlueJay and flash the flight controller with the latest version of Betaflight. I went through Betaflight and selected the port which the receiver and video transmitter were connected to, turning on or on the different options in the configuration tab, setting up the video transmitter, configuring the modes or switches, setting up the on-screen display and applying a preset tune and making sure all the motors were in the correct order as well as spinning in the right direction. Now it was done and time to take it out to fly. It flew. I'm glad it was flying, but not only flying, it was flying really well. Betaflight includes a bunch of preset tunes which make it even easier to get your quad flying great and it's just a click. I was quite impressed with how this build turned out and just how well it flew even though that was short lived as after my first crash it seemed there's now an issue with the ESC and I suspect it's been blown. Overall the total cost came in at 220 US dollars and since the ESC is stuffed I'm going to be up for another 50 dollars to replace it. I'd recommend buying the iFlight Success 4-in-1 ESC as it's decent quality, resilient and comes in at $45. 
This would have brought the total build cost if I bought it at the beginning to under 250 bucks. The question is, for 250 bucks, is it better to have built a budget quad like this or buy something pre-made like this $84 FPV drone? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm Darren from Everything Micro FPV. Until next time, don't forget to send it.